Hello everyone, I'm Jackie and I'm with Jackie of All Trades. To my friends, I'm a meme lord, having run one of the largest Telegram meme groups in the past. To professionals, I'm a data scientist and fintech entrepreneur for many years. It's my pleasure to be able to combine two of my biggest loves here this afternoon. The title of my talk is Memes in Web3, Why They Matter. More specifically, I'd like to share more about how memes are one of the main driving forces in the Web3 space. And because it is Web3, I'll be sharing three reasons why it is so. But before we go further, it's good to lay out definitions on the two concepts that I intend to talk about, Web3 and memes. Let's start with Web3. Depending on who you ask, the optimist, the technologist, or the skeptic, you will get very differing answers. To the optimist, the Web3 is a moment in history and a new era on the internet. To the technologist, the Web3 is the decentralized internet centered around the blockchain technology and an economy centered around digital tokens. And finally, to skeptics and cynics, the Web3 is nothing but a rebrand of the crypto scene of old and nothing but a scam once again. No matter which camp you belong to, there is no doubt that the online world is abuzz with excitement and uncertainty on what comes next. We'll come back to what makes Web3, Web3 later on, but let's move on to what a meme is. The idea of a meme can be quite hard to pin down because of its seemingly nebulous nature. We all can identify what a meme is, but really why it's a meme compared to other images, uh, but not really why it's a meme compared to the other images that we see. The concept of a meme was coined in 1976 by Richard Dawkins in his book, The Selfish Gene. In his book, Dawkins defined a meme as a concept for discussion of evolutionary principles in explaining the spread of ideas and cultural phenomena. Memes used to be a static concept, meaning that information that was transmitted from person to person was the same. However, in recent times, memes are no longer static and can change in form repeatedly over time as it transmits from person to person online. At the time of this talk, the idea of a meme was proposed 46 years ago. And the reason why I mentioned this is because the modern internet is only 39 years old. What? What? Right? In terms of human years, 39 years is a middle-aged person. 39 years is also roughly two generations long. This stunning fact brings us to my first point on why memes are important in Web3. It's the right time, right? What is the right time as opposed to the wrong time? Is there even a right time? Yes, there is. Consider the following diagram. It is a timeline of how the internet has evolved over time. In the 1990s, we have had what we call Web 1.0. Information displayed in Web 1.0 is static, and there was not much interaction between users on a large scale. And because of this, memes can't move rapidly the same way it does today. Then came Web 2.0, an era when information can both be read and written. This was when internet companies such as Google, Facebook, and YouTube emerged. When Facebook and YouTube emerged, it became easier for anyone to create and share information. It was around the 2000s when memes emerged and became really popular. Over the next decade or so, we see these companies, which have grown into giants, take advantage of their users, more specifically, their data and behavior, to be sold to advertisers and companies. The centralization of power did not help either, as users were helpless and were at their back and call. In the 2010s, a new technology emerged called blockchain. This young technology was exciting because it was decentralized and power was given back to users. 
Through central decentralization, ownership of data is reclaimed. Compared to Web 2.0, Web 3 is participative as members of the Web 3 community generate value through their activities. The second thing that I'd like to share with you is a timeline. More specifically, it is a timeline of two generations, millennials and Gen Zs over 30 years. Millennials grew up without internet access, and in their teenage years and adulthood, they lived with the internet. Gen Zs are true digital natives, being born into sometime between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. This is an important point because we now have a generation of people who think entirely in internet culture, and this includes memes. This also means in the participative Web3 economy, we have young folks who similarly participate and interact with each other through memes. Finally, I'd like to share the evolution of memes over time. We started with very simple images and eventually proceeded to image macros with defined intent. In the mid-2010s, memes became increasingly self-aware and ironic, culminating in multi-layered memes that are cross-referential. The time is right because internet natives engage and participate in content that is completely different from how millennials have done. I will go through some examples later on. Which brings us to our second point, that memes are assets in more ways than one. Firstly, memes started as entertainment and eventually became an asset to be traded. This trend started in 2013 when Dogcoin was created. The dog meme started off as an image of a polite looking Shiba Inu, but a pair of programmers thought it'd be funny to name a token after the meme. This was to make fun of the wild speculative nature of cryptocurrencies in the early days. It's widely considered to be the first coin based on a meme. Fascinatingly, the value of dot coins suddenly increased 200 times from $0.03 to 84 cents at its peak. Since then, dot coin has inspired countless tokens based on memes, collectively known as meme coins. These meme coins have no other value than the fact that they are memes, but they are traded none the same. Cryptocurrency is highly volatile and its price can change anytime. Elon Musk, famed tech entrepreneur, is infamous for tweeting about coins and driving their prices up or down. Over there, you can see how the price of Bitcoin changes whenever he tweets about it. In other words, he memed a coin into having value or not having value. It was around the time when the Web3 community realized that memeing has a certain power and, around, and the value of a coin can fluctuate depending on who's memeing it. In the early days of Web 2.0, no one truly owned memes because once the meme was out in the world, it belonged to everyone and anyone who saved it on their hard disk. However, in Web3, the existence of non-fungible tokens changed everything. A non-fungible token, or an NFT, is a digital asset that has verifiable originality and ownership. It means that an owner can unambigu um, unambiguously own an intellectual property, be it an artwork or a piece of music or any creative work. Interestingly, the ideas of NFTs are new. The concept emerged around 2017 and ideas, but ideas incorporating NFTs did not survive long back then. However, in the recent years, NFTs saw an insane amount of interest and revival, starting with CryptoPunks, the granddaddy of NFTs. Like Wildfire, everyone was suddenly interested in NFTs, be it collecting them or flipping them for extra money. In the past year or so, the originator of the crazy girlfriend meme sold her memes NFT for 411,000. And the grumpy cat sold its right for 80,000. Disaster girl sold her memes NFT for 500,000. Suddenly, it paid off to be a meme. And on this note comes the final point on why memes are important in Web3. Memes are no longer just memes, but are also co-opted as a form of identity, identity in Web3 through the use of NFTs. But before we talk about that, 
let's talk briefly about identity and the concept of in-grouping. Have you ever felt left out when a bunch of friends were sharing an inside joke and you didn't quite get it? Conversely, doesn't it feel great when you share the same jokes with your friends? Sharing an inside joke can build rapport amongst the peers, creating what is called an in-group. In-grouping can happen through anything, as long as there is common understanding and appreciation amongst the members, even if the thing in common is obscure. I argue that NFTs have the same effect in creating in-groups amongst its members. A typical NFT project goes like this. Take a base template and add variations all over. The NFTs are different enough to be distinct, but similar enough to indicate that it is the part of the same project. It is from this sameness that gives rise to adopters using NFTs as part of their identities. This leads to the creation of in-groups that separate Web3 adopters from the other lay people. This trend is so prominent that Twitter started verifying NFTs and letting users use them as profile pictures. The hexagonal profile pic shape well, uh, is a badge of honor for Web3 enthusiasts. In fact, the hexagonal profile pictures are how you can tell whether someone is part of the ecosystem or otherwise. Apart from using uh, memes as a form of identity in the Web3 world, memes are also being used in a layered manner in projects. An example would be simp culture. Now, what is simp culture? Simp is an internet slang describing someone who does way too much for a member of the opposite gender, usually in a futile attempt to win her favor, often sexual. It's primarily used as an insult, but when a project called Irene Dow emerged, it playfully adopted sim culture and turned it into a multi-million web free project. A decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO is an organization that is represented by interactions recorded on the blockchain. It is also supported by smart contracts. So members of DAOs congregate around a certain idea and purpose and pool funds to achieve them. In Irene Dow's case, members described themselves as the Sims and generously supported her project around building communities. Behind the seemingly flippant facade of memes were solid principles and an idea for building a decentralized social network between influencers and their fans. The success of her project inspired a flood of simp-based projects. On an interesting note, Irene Dow itself is a form of meme as it spawned copies of itself. But more importantly, you won't quite get what Irene Dow is all about unless you have prior context, and that prior context is memes. And with this, my talk has come to an end. In summary, memes are important in Web3 because of these three reasons. Firstly, it's the right time. Secondly, memes can be turned into assets with values. And lastly, memes are complex and layered enough to be incorporated in one's identity in Web3. What does it mean for you? If there's one thing that you should take away from this, it's that to understand Web3 fully, you need to live and breathe memes. My name is Jackie, and thank you for listening to my TEDx talk. Have a good afternoon.